the best defender the Adelaide Crows ever had, and now a member of the Australian Football Hall of Fame, Ben Hartz. wouldn't like to expand on what Mark Rusciuto alluded to there. What did you learn with him in your late teenage years? <laughs> uh, probably some stuff that can't be said, although, um, uh, it, look, it was fun. It was great fun. Uh, we were both young kids coming into a, into a team that was uh, new to the state. Uh, all we ever wanted to do, both of us, was play footy, uh, and we got the chance to do that. And we learned from the people that, that were there at the club at the time um, how to play on and off the field. So. We can leave it there. <laughs> if we've got a long more, lot more time, I can expand. You've got your kids here. Yeah, no, exactly yes, right. Yes. Um, you're a product of college football in mm. South Australia. How rich was the culture around Ross Trevor College? Yeah, college footy was huge uh, um, over there. Much the same now, and my son, Zach, is, is going through that at the moment here. Um, Ross Trevor College, um, St Peter's, um, PAC, Sacred Heart, we've all, we've all heard of them, but um, they were huge games. Um, they were big games of footy, big like an SNFL game almost, the, the amount of um, pride that you took in playing in them, um, your ability to perform in them, um, and, and, and you just want to be involved, I think. Um, so that, they were great days for me. Uh, I was a centre half forward back then, mm -hmm. um, cut my teeth taking, taking speckies, etc. Um, but look, it was a great, a great grounding for me to, to further my footy. Um, luckily enough, at the time, North Adelaide were, were playing and they, they had me on, uh, I was one of their players, and I was uh, enabled to be able to play league footy at the age of 15 while still playing school footy, which was not allowed, basically. So uh, I think the, the headmaster may have got the sack because of it, but, um, <laughs> but it gave me a great grounding to, to go on. And in fact, by the time you were playing your first year with the Crows, you were still at school. So mm. you were the school kid coming to training in uniform? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the short shorts and uh, the long socks and the, the tie tie done up. Did my first press conference, I think it was at the time, uh, in my school uniform after mum and dad had to drive me down to, to training. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a it was a special time. All I ever wanted to do was play footy and play at the highest level I ever could. Um, I was lucky enough that it came pretty early. Um, and when Adelaide came along, they they managed or they were able to put ten young kids on the list uh, at the time, and I was one of those guys. Um, so I just took every chance that I possibly could. Didn't play in my first year, but was on the list going to school, which was pretty cool, I must yeah. admit, at the time. Um, but then played in the second year, and I repeated year 12. Um, went back and repeated year 12, but as soon as the footy came into it, repeating year 12 didn't really matter too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in fact, I got exactly the same bloody score as I did the year before. So. <laughs> Make your footy panned out. <laughs> in those first two years, you were all Australian which is remarkable when you think about it now as a teenager. So how quickly were you playing on the great full forwards of the era? And these are the great full forwards. Yeah, a few of them here at the moment. Um, real early, real early. I, um, I actually remember 1992 um, and Cornsey, who's here, I believe, I'm not sure where you are, Graham. Um, he asked in a team meeting, we were playing St Kilda, and he said, who wants to stand on Tony Locker? And to this day, Jared, I do not know why my hand <laughs> shot up in the air. But I said, yeah, I'll take the job. And I think he was really quick too, Graham, to say, all right, you've got it, because no, <laughs> no one else wanted it. So, um, look, I, I wanted to do it. Um, and I was on him early. And, and um, my whole plan that day, I'll, I'll just digress on that one. Yeah. My whole plan on that day, I didn't want to use my bulk and size against him. <laughs> Jerry. So I decided I'd play a couple of metres away from him and try and use some athletic ability they might have had a, against him, and get a run and jump. I also asked the coach to put a player in front of me in the hole if they wouldn't mind to help me out. So I was doing that and we were going okay. We were playing good footy. I'm taking my two metres, coming in, spoiling and getting, getting the game on, on, uh, on our terms, running the ball out and trying to get as far away from him as I could. <laughs> <coughs> so that's going well. Come into the second half of the game and um, it started getting really cloudy and, and really quite dark. And we're winning and he's kicked one, I think, maybe two. Um, and I got my two metres away. And I look over and he's looking around like this. And I think he's surely going to belt me. He's going <laughs> to smash me for, I don't know why, just because he was just that big. Anyway, so I stood there and the next minute he took a step towards me. So I'm standing here. He goes, 
looks down at me and he le leant down and he said, looks like we're going to get a bit of rain. <laughs> I didn't answer him. I just went like that. <laughs> and got out of his way. We won the game, he kicked two goals. I was pretty happy and I got off of there real quick. Um, but I, look, lucky enough, I, I say lucky, I played on, on, on Tony a few times, I played on on Jason, who's here, Dunstall a few times. I played on Gary Abbott a few times, mm -hmm. and they taught me about the game of footy. I, I couldn't match them with, with uh, power or size or strength. I just couldn't. So I had to find ways to beat these guys and, or match these guys, not beat these guys. They were hard to beat, but to match these guys, and they taught me how to play the game of footy. So I'm, I'm grateful that I came at, at that time to be able to play against those fellas. And on a bad day, they were all on the same ground when you played for <laughs> South Australia. Yeah, so true. I walked down 1995, I think it was, State of Origin game. Myself, Nigel Smart, Richard Champion, I can't remember who else was, Paul Bullis maybe playing in the back line. We walked down, State of Origin at the G, this was Teddy Whitten's game, so we were doomed from the start. But we walked down and we looked down and there was Ablett, Lockett, Stewie Lowe, Gary Lyon, Rob Harvey. And we looked at each other and we said, which one do you want to take? <laughs> <laughs> I took Gary that day. He only kicked four. Um, poor old Nigel <laughs> got uh, Tony to kick seven. So, look, <coughs> we were doomed, but that, that's OK. Um, but it, it was such a great time for me to be able to do that. Mm. I had one of my best games ever playing on Gary Ablett Senior. I kept him to two goals to half-time. he came come out and he kicked four in the... In the uh, yeah, four in the third and four in the last. He kicked ten. I had 28 possessions, got third best at the club, but he's kicked ten goals, so work that out, <laughs> I'm not sure. You played... Oh, you took enough screamers that you were bound to win Mark of the Year once. You won Mark of the Year at the glorious time when the prize actually was a car. Yeah. Um, a Mitsubishi Magna actually at the time, so I shouldn't say that. But um, just Toyotas are way better cars. Um, <laughs> however, what I did do was, was um, I kept it for two years. Because yep. I needed a car at the time. 1996, uh, St Kilda, and we saw it up there before. Um, Rob Harvey, who I work with at the moment, um, he was coming in for the crumb. I said, there was no chance you were going to get a crumb, Rob. Um, I was always going to catch that one. But won the car, uh, kept it for two years, and then I actually sold it to Mum and Dad, who are here tonight. So, <laughs> double win for me. Did really well. <laughs> Rue spoke about the 98 grand final and how central you were in the first half when you were under siege. What are your memories of that day? Yeah, it's a, it's a fabulous day. Um, to be able to stay in the game and have a contribution, I believe, to... Um, to a performance and winning a grand final was 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 will hold, I'll hold that very dear. Um, we were down and out in the first half, and they just kept coming north. They were going to beat us. We weren't the best time, best team at the time, but we were playing good footy. So North got on top. They they missed a few goals, but we just hung in as tight as we possibly could. Um, so to have a contribution in that and, and and say that you you performed on a big day and, and enabled a team that 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 you love to to win a grand final, um, I'll hold that really dear. Um, but, look, it was, it was a huge win. Um, and if it wasn't for other guys on the back of that, so I did my bit, but Andrew McLeod, um, Darren Jarman, um, if they didn't do what they did, then the, you know, history may be different. But uh, it was good to be able to contribute. You've taken up coaching. What, what did the playing journey teach you that you're able to impart on younger fellas as they come to it with the same dreams that you had? Yeah, well, hopefully um, the ability to compete. I think listening to what Rue was talking about, um, um, I... I, there was a bit of highlights there of me kicking goals and, and, and make, taking those marks, but I, I just wanted to compete, to be quite honest. I just I wanted to compete as hard as I could and not get beaten, and if I got beaten, get up and, and not get beaten the next time. And if I got beaten then, then I'd change something and I'd try and not get beaten the next time. I, I, such a competitor uh, in my own heart. I, um, not big, you know, not strong, had a little bit of speed, but wanted to, to do whatever I could to compete against the best that were out there. Um, maybe for myself, but to prove that I could, could do it and whatever I could do to help the team was, was my aim. And um, at times, at, it came to fruition. And Jonathan Marsh, who's here right now, Marsh, I said to you the other day, I made 11 mistakes in my career, which um, is not many, is it, Marsh? <laughs> but I competed. So um, uh, that's not true, by the way. <laughs> it was probably 12. <laughs> um, but it's about just competing, to be quite honest, and, and, and I try to impart that into, into players and be the best team man you can possibly be. And look at what it amounts to, yeah. uh, and maybe a few thank yous. Yeah, thanks. Um, first of all, the AFL Commission, thank you so much. This is uh, such an overwhelming um, type of award to receive, and um, I must admit, I don't know, Mike, when, I, when you rang, the, um, I don't know how good my answer was, because I was pretty... Um, 
pretty shocked, to be honest, that uh, this got afforded to myself. Uh, I'm so grateful for that, and I, I thank you so, so much. Um, Naomi, my wife, who's been through me, um, through me. <laughs> we are staying here tonight, so you never know. has been through everything with me um, <laughs> since, and she asked me not to say this, but th there is a, a footy career, and my, my footy career is a series of bricks, okay, and you build and you build and you build a house, etc. and it's not the mortar that, that holds it together, but I'd say it's the foundation that, that, that helps things occur, um, and without you involved and having three beautiful children, then uh, it wouldn't be possible, so I thank you so much for that. To my family who are here, Mum and Dad, for helping me uh, all through my, my journey um, to die, to Bugs and Beth um, for, for being there all the time and always encouraging me to do what I, what I uh, dreamed of doing and backing me up whenever I um, had the opportunity to do that. Um, to my kids, just uh, you're the best, Imogen, Zach and, and Brady. Um, and last, um, two last people I want to thank is, um, is all my coaches. Um, throughout my career. They gave me an opportunity, especially from Cornsey from an early day. Uh, as a young fellow, I didn't know what he was going to get, I didn't know what I was going to give, but he backed me in to, to play the game. Um, uh, so I appreciate that a lot, but all the way through to, to guys who backed me in for my ability, I was lucky enough to be picked in the team um, over 300 times, which means they saw something in me, so I really do appreciate that. Uh, and none of this, I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for my teammates. My teammates are what make um, players players. Uh, they make teams teams, clearly. But without them, um, and all of them, whether they didn't play a game, whether they played 300 games with me, without them, then I wouldn't be standing up here right now. So it's to my teammates that I owe the, the greatest debt of gratitude to them. Um, and to everyone else, thank you for, for coming and hope you have a great night. Ben Hart joins the Australian Football Hall of Fame.